video, we consider a purchase made by several students, where some students fail to pay their share. A group of students together buy a couch for their dorm that costs $96. Two students fail to pay their share, so the remaining students have to pay $4 more each. We want to know how many students were in the original group. Again, we're talking about revenue, or how much money is exchanging hands, and so we consider the number of people involved times the price per person is going to equal the total revenue exchanged, or the amount of money exchanged. And so if we set this up in our table, in the original deal, we don't know the number of students or the price each agreed to pay. But we do know the amount of revenue that was agreed to be exchanged. The price of this couch is going to be $96. That's what was supposed to happen. However, in reality, two students failed to pay their share. So the number has been decreased or subtracted 2. Now, to make up for that, each student has to pay $4 more. So each individual contribution for price is going to increase by $4 to buy the couch. Now, the couch hasn't changed in value. The same amount of money as is still exchanged. It's still $96 for the couch. And then we can use both of these rows to come up with our two equations, that n times p equals 96, and n minus 2 times p plus 4 is also equal to 96. We now have a simultaneous product we can solve by dividing both sides by the same factor. We divide by the factor we're looking for, and the question's asking how many students. It's asking for the number. So we're going to divide by the number, or the n factor, on the first equation, which gives us p is equal to 96 over n. And the factor with n is n minus 2 on the other equation which gives us p plus 4 equals 96 over n minus 2. We're now ready to make our substitution, replacing the p with 96 over n. Plus 4 equals 96 over n minus 2. We now have an equation we can solve by identifying the least common denominator of n times n minus 2. So we'll multiply each term on both sides by n times n minus 2. When the n's divide out, I get 96 times n minus 2 plus 4n times n minus 2 equals the n minus 2's divide out 96n. Start solving by distributing through the parentheses. Gives us 96n minus 192 plus 4n squared minus 8n equals 96n. Let me scroll to buy us a little more space to work. One thing you might notice is we've got this 96n on both sides. If we subtract 96n from both sides, those will each subtract out to 0. That's really convenient. Putting things in order, then, we've got 4n squared minus 8n minus 192 equals 0. And we have an equation we can solve by factoring. First, factor out the 4, gives us n squared minus 2n minus... 192 divided by 4 is 48 equals 0. And 48 is 6 times 8, so we've got 4 times n minus 8 times n plus 6 equals 0. And we can solve by making each of those factors equal 0. I'm going to move up here. n minus 8 equals 0, n plus 6 equals 0. Add 8 to the first equation to get n equals 8, subtract 6 to get n equals negative 6. Remember, though, n represents the number of students. You're not going to have negative 6 students in on the deal, so the original group of students must have made up of 8 students. We found that solution by building a simultaneous product and solving by clearing with the LCD, making it equal to 0, and factoring 8 students in the original group.